It's 6.55, I'm just at the gate at the top of the site and uh, Alan's already here, which is really good, but it's been raining all night. Um, high winds, which hopefully have passed, but the rain's the biggest problem and the biggest concern. So we're gonna be able to see how Alan and his truck gets down on those track pads. So fingers crossed it all goes well. That seemed to go well. Push a lot of water out, but you didn't sink. There he is. Certainly a different picture from when we poured in the summer. So this is the reality of it. It's good that Alan got down there okay. The track pads did bend a bit, but they popped back into position. Um, but I think that you do have to have undisturbed ground at least underneath the track pads i've seen them used on uh, farmers fields for uh, event parking so uh, they obviously work but the question was always going to be with 22 ton of uh, vehicle So hopefully the pour is going to be done by two o'clock. It's eight o'clock or five two. So uh, the guy from Phase Concrete, we used them last time. They're uh, ahead of time, which is great. Really good company, by the way. That's a poor starter for the first floor. It's taken a while to get here, but we've got here safely and broadly on budget. But the most important thing is safely. And right, you know, if it's put in wrong, once the concrete's set, you can't just drag it out and knock it down. You have to destroy half the building. So slow and steady wins a race, and we'd much rather that. That's good. So these are the window hatches and the concrete as it's been pumped along. The verticals here are being done up to about a metre in height and then here's Jordan who's just filling up the undersill. There's two spots there. As I've been reliably informed, if you just fill this up and this level isn't at the right height, when you vibrate it, it migrates sideways and brings the whole level down. So do the uprights and work your way along. Makes sense. going in as you can see concrete pump there um, we've had to put track mats down on um, the site because the mud is unbelievable the sun has just come out after having rain relentlessly now haven't we it's been horrendous on site we are soaked and filthy so hopefully we'll have a dry afternoon now so Jim's got to fill up the rest of this uh, first floor and then Two days after we've got the steels and the trusses being lifted in position and the empty gate lens there behind us and um, 
and then the third pour next Monday. The third and final pour. Final pour, and then roof on. So what Jordan's doing now, he's vibrating the steelwork to get all the poured concrete off it. So when we come to do the final pour for these lintels, it will be one big homogenous pour. Is that right, James? It is. There you have it, from the master. One of the most important jobs is making sure the, the concrete guys who are waiting, because we're a little bit behind on the pour, get fed and watered to cake delivery. Now around the site are strange hieroglyphs etched into the Nidura. And what it does is it gives you a glimpse into the interesting yet fascinating world of a Nidura builder. And I haven't seen some of these equations since high school. Well, everybody's done a good job clearing down for the day and even though it's quite early it was an early start so everybody's thinning out now although it doesn't look much different the fact is that those top walls now are filled with the 26 cubic meters of concrete Thank you.